everyone. Welcome to Southern Assault 2014 Game 2, My Beastman versus a Warrior's Army. Uh, this was, game was kind of interesting um, because my opponent and I uh, don't really live near each other, but when I asked him if I could take pictures and post a battle report, he said that, that we had played before, and it was, it was probably three years ago at Buckeye Battles, you know, halfway across the country, game four at the second to top table. So the winner of our game was going to the top table of that tournament. And um, really wonky game. I ended up pulling out the, the victory and moving ahead. And so he was like, all right, let's see if we can get some revenge now. So now we're both uh, at the top table or one of the top tables, but it's only game two in this tournament. My Beastman versus a, a, uh, a what I consider a pretty balanced Warriors list. So on the right, he's got, first of all, I have my scouting harpies way on the right. He's He has a unit of uh, corn skull crushers, and they've got the flaming banner. He's got his level four lore of Zinch. This dude's, man, lore of Zinch is such a great lore, and a sorcerer lord on a disc is just brutal. He's got some marauders, chaos warriors uh, marked corn, and then behind them, he's got a BSB on a war shrine. I think that's definitely a concession for comp. Uh, some chaos trolls. Uh, some Hellstriders, and then some behind them are some Zinch warriors. So sword and board with Zinch means they're pretty darn survivable, and that Chaos Lord can kill stuff. So he actually doesn't need the Chaos Warriors to kill a whole lot. That Lord will do it. I, I need my Lord nowhere near him. My 1-up rerollable doesn't mean anything against a sword that ignores armor saves, and, it's, and then it does a bunch of wounds and gets more attacks, something weird like that. That is just nasty. And then, of course, there's a hell cannon on a hill. On the left, I've got my three Razor Gore chariots facing out like that. Uh, his his uh, fast calf started way off on the left, and they vanguarded over. So, um, basically, I just want to make sure he wasn't going to swoop around my flank. That's why they're fanned out like that. I've got a horde of gore with my level four lore of death in the front left corner. And, let's see, I've got the herdstone behind it as my bunker uh, with... Uh, all my wizards in it. I don't know what I'm really worried about is Laura Zinch guy just coming up and being able to cast magic missiles at him. That's why they're in a bunker. The problem is that that hell cannon, all he has to do is, is hit it and kill one guy, and I'm taking a, a uh, panic test of minus one. And if I run off the board, all three of my wizards are going to go with it. <laughs> so uh, it's it's uh, not ideal. Uh, you see the razor gore there. Uh, he's actually facing straight ahead. I accidentally knocked him. And then I've got another horde of gore with my BSB and my general. And to the right of them, my best of gore and uh, with, with the standard of discipline. So you can see I took my general out of the best of gore. I've, I've gotten away from the thinking that I, he has to go in that unit. I need to get the best of gore matched up against those um, those skull crushers. Uh, it's a brutal fight. I, don't, I think we would both come away uh, very, very much bloodied. But without it, I just don't have any chance. My gore won't do anything to the skull crushers. I've got a razor gore up there as well. So his job is to maybe redirect him. Um, otherwise, I'm thinking I want to slow down his general's unit and take care of the other things first. Easier said than done. He wins the turn to go first. He goes like that. He's at the bridges with both with his with his skull crushers on the right, with his general's unit on the left. His, uh, his sorcerer doesn't care about anything I have to go against him, which makes me want to have some cannons or something. Uh, let's see, nothing too much of significance happens, except for he does treason of Zinch on my general's unit, and I have to use my scroll. Like He, he rolls pretty well. I can't be sure that my dice will stop it, and I have to stop that. And then he... he uh, so his trick is force through the treason of Zinch and then hit the, with a the hell cannon. It's a great combo. You'd be taking a panic test on minus one, and you can't use your general or your BSB, and you have to use the lowest leadership in the unit. So that means if he hits that unit on a five or less, unless I roll a six or under, uh, they're going to run and probably run off the table. Really, really scary. So I stopped the spell, and uh, no, knowing that next time I may not be able to, and his... his uh, his hell cannon scatters off. So, Beastman turn one. Uh, for the most part, again, I'm just hanging back. Um, I'm kind of curious what he's going to do with his units in the middle, because they can't march across the river. They can only walk. And that river, the way it bows there in the middle, is just brutal. That means it's going to take a couple turns of walking, 
and I could probably charge him while he's in it, negating his ranks. So he, unless he's willing to do that, he's constrained only bringing units across on the bridges. Now the irony is he kind of has me outranged um, with his hell cannon, and he's got brutal magic, but I've got such a dominant magic phase as well that it's 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 dicey in terms of who has whom ranged. Uh, on the right, my Razor Gore charges his level 4, and he runs away. And on the bridge on the right, I take another Razor Gore and park him, uh, hoping that his Skull Crushers will fail their Frenzy test and have to charge him. And if they don't charge him, they still can't move up very far, so I'm kind of good that way too. And then I park the uh, Harpies where you see him. I don't have any much use for the Harpies, uh, but if I need to, if I'm in dire straits... Um, if they charge the flank of the Skull Crusher unit, there's a smallest chance that they won't die to a man, and you'll have to pursue them. So we go to... Oh, and the one thing I did the magic phase... I'm going to go up one... All right, so I got two spells off. You can tell on his general's unit, top left. One of them I know... I got their movement down to nothing. <laughs> I think I, I threw a couple miasmas at them. Um, no, I'm sorry. I have one. I have miasma on one wizard, and I have the withering on a, one unit, and I have... Um, Purple Sun, or I have a Occam's Mind Razor on another. So I got one Withering, and I got his movement down really low, and some other spell that of that's not of significance. Um, I think Doom and Darkness. Uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, Warriors of Chaos turn two. So his General's unit doesn't move much because he can't move much. He's just kind of stuck there. He takes his trolls and his corn warriors and parks them right at the river's edge, saying, "If you want to charge me, you're going to have to be in the river," which neither of us want to do. And on the right. His Skull Crushers fail their Frenzy test and have to charge the Razor Gore. Which is good for me, as long as when he runs his Overrun, he, he rolls fairly high. If you were to roll like a 3 and my best score charges, my best score are probably going to be in his front. If that happens, I'd probably just charge him with my Gore unit, uh, because I could move my General in there, and he is with a Beast Banner and my General's plus 2 Strength Sword. He's at Strength 8 and could do a lot of damage. Nevertheless, it's not ideal. There's that. What I need him to do is is uh, kill or break this guy from combat and then roll just really high. Uh, during magic, I let a spell through. It kills my Razor Gore. I have to save my dice to stop the trees in a zinch. And I, I do stop it, and his skull can, his hell cannon scatters off anyway. After combat, he rolls like a 10 or a 12. I, I think a 10. Um, and just lands right in front of my best Gore. <laughs> this is brutal. Um, yeah, so, and just one thing that happened, when I charge him with my best Gore, uh, in my magic phase, uh, I get off Doom and Darkness. I have, I have to get this unit dealt with. I can't allow him to uh, stick around. Uh, there was a rules question that came up, because when I charge in, and I, I kill the back rank guy, uh, that changed the direction of flight to where it's closer towards the edge of the table. And my opponent was unfamiliar with that rule. And that's just a real bad time to find out about it. Call the rules judges over. They agreed that direction of flight is center to center. Um, I can say, though, that if the rule weren't that way, or if we weren't going to play it that way and I knew in advance, I just would have taken my harpies and parked them back on the other side of the, the, uh, his unit so that if he fled, he would bounce all the way through them and off the board but I didn't think it was necessary because of the direction of flight rule. So during the magic phase, he gets off Treason of Zinch. Oh, I... That's just... Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is in his magic phase. Oh my gosh. So in his magic phase, he got off Treason of Zinch, but his cell cannon um, misfired. That scared the death out of me. This, so this is my phase, and I don't know why I'm showing that picture. So Beastman turned to... Yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's right. That's his face. He got off trees in his zinch, and his, and his hell cannon uh, scattered. So it scared me, but we lived another day. So then we go to Beastman turn two. My best score charge the skull, the, the, um, skull crushers on the right. Um, my general's unit moves up. I move up enough, because if I, if I get hit um, with that same combo next turn and I flee, I don't want to run off the board, so I move up. And... Uh, yeah, so otherwise, I move my chariots up, so I'm just out of range for him to get a decent charge on me. If he moves his general's unit onto that bridge, I want a triple charge with my chariots. I think in the long run I lose that, actually, but I don't care. If I can whittle his unit down, then I have a chance when I get my gore up against him. Uh, otherwise, yeah, moving up, 
uh, I, again, as aggressively as I can. I just don't want to get charged by his guys. I want him to fail charge is that what I want. So we, we charge in, we do some damage. Um, like I said, I kill, I kill one or two models. Um, anyway, I do a bunch of wounds, but we forgot about Doom and Darkness, and he rolled his break test, and he stuck. And then I, then we saw the card. We're like, hey, they were doomed. And so he failed it, and uh, I pursued him like you see. So we go to Warriors, turn three. His general moves up on the bridge because he finally has some movement to do something. Uh, my only fear there is that I'm going to fail one or two charges with my chariots. I need a triple charge to get those guys whittled down. I was really hoping his trolls and corn warriors would start coming across the river, but it's just it's just a bad deal. I mean, nobody wants to do it. You can't march. You're stuck in the river without ranks. You can't be steadfast or anything else. Uh, yeah, not a good situation. Otherwise, everything looks like you can see it. And during the magic phase, he gets Treason of Zinchoff again. And this time, the Hell Cannon hits. is a direct hit. He kills 10 models. Just brutal. I am on... Uh, I have to use the lowest leadership, minus one. So I'm on a six with no reroll, and I stick it. Now, if I had fled, if I had failed it, I would have fled. I probably would have stayed on the board because by this point I'd moved up enough. Uh, the problem then would be rallying. I'd be on a seven plus musician. I'd be on an eight with no reroll, and there's a real good chance I don't pass that and run right off the board. So this was really scary. So rolling a six or under when I needed it was very much appreciated. We go to Beastman, turn three. So on the left, triple charge into his, to his warriors. I'm very, very happy about that. I'm moving my troops up closer to that river. I'm, I'm less and less afraid of them. And now I'm going to be saying, now I'm saying, you charge me across the river and um, have to sit there. Now his core and warriors against my gore still do a ton of damage. Um, he may not need ranks there. Uh, so that's still a little bit scary. But again, we're still far enough away that it may not really matter. There's the triple charge. And after combat, look at that. His Chaos Lord just whiffed. That guy is so BA. He did no wounds to that chariot. Just awful. Um, I got Withering on him. He's down one toughness, so he's at toughness three. Uh, I'm charging in. I don't know. If anybody knows this, let me know. I've been using their strength on the charge at five. I know that Razor Gores are plus one strength and so on the charge, so their strength six. But I just wasn't sure if that translated to the chariots. And so... We're treating it strength five, but nevertheless, he's toughness three. We do ten wounds to him. I'm, we win combat. He's steadfast and sticks. So, yeah, I'll take it. That's kind of what I needed there. We go to Warriors turn four. He countercharges the trolls into the flank of those chariots. His uh, chaos, his corn warriors pass their frenzy test and just stay there. If you look on the right, his fast cav is kind of behind my lines, but I'm just not too worried about him, to be honest. In the top right, by the way, his marauders are in that building. He's just going to conserve points because I'm not. It's not worth it to me to charge in to get him. And his chaos sorcerer lord is right in the middle of my lines. There's nothing I can never do anything about that. I have no shooting. And then his hell cannon fires and <laughs> misfires and gets sucked somewhere bad. They rolled a one. Brutal for him. Very lucky for me. That's another thing I had no answer for. After combat, he kills two chariots, chases off the other one with only a couple wounds remaining, and looks like that. That's actually good for me. I can charge on my turn. I have a magic phase to force through something. I'd love to get Occam's off. If I can't get Occam's, I'll take Soul Blight. Um, either one, uh, I'll take it. So we go to Beastman turn four. My horde on the left with my level four charges into his general's unit. He has to declare a challenge. I make a mistake the first time and accept the champion. I think the smarter thing to do is just to decline and get my level four out of harm's way on the back rank. Um, anyway, and then on the right, my general's unit moves right up to the line. <laughs> We're just saying, who needs the points worse? I'm okay taking the charge against him. If I, if I, it's in a magic phase when I have nothing else I need to do and can force through some um, magic support. On the right, I, uh, just, I'm just walking my best to go out of the river. There's that. It really comes down to, can I get some magic support? Because without it, it's just tough for me to push wounds through on him. I think, um, yeah, so anyway, we go to the magic phase. I get a couple buffs off. It's actually a dominant, dominant magic phase. But I get, I get Occam's off, and even with Occam's, 
I only kill a handful of warriors. It was, I couldn't believe it. I thought I would just erase that unit. Uh, I didn't hurt his general because I was too stupid. I accepted the challenge with the champion. If I would have ignored it, the champion, I would have had all those attacks on his general with Occam's. Probably would have killed him. Um, but I've got Occam's up, and so on my turn, it, it remains up. And then I'll, I'm, I'm confident I'm going to win this, and that's pretty much going to be the game. Warriors turn five. He uh, brings his chaos trolls in to see if they can help out. His, um, I think his frenzied warriors tried to charge me and failed because they're in the river. So uh, that works. Yeah, there's that. His, uh, yeah, his hell striders, I guess, tried to charge my harpies and I fled, and so he just had a failed charge there. And there's that failed charge. Action shots all the way around. Um, during the magic phase, he, he has a spell where he basically can steal one of your spells. So he stole Occam's Mind Razor from me. Uh, the good news for me, though, is I don't really need it now. I, I got it when I needed it. After combat, it looks like that. So he killed his general's unit to a man. Uh, Reach in, saved his Chaos Trolls. Uh, I, pers I chased him, and they got away. But bad news for my opponent is this is his turn. So on my turn, of course, I charge his Chaos Warriors in the flank. I make a mistake here, too. I make mistakes on this, all around this tournament. One, I took a, the chariot into his war shrine uh, just to see if I could punk his BSB. In hindsight, that was a huge mistake. That guy is so tricked out, really hard to kill. Uh, I don't need the, the chariot, but why feed points? Uh, another thing I did was I threw my general in there just because I wanted him to get in combat. And again, in hindsight, there's just no reason for it. Um, yeah, so it looks like that. There's that. After combat... Yeah, we um, we ran him down. My general ran him down. The other unit, I don't know if they caught him or not, but it doesn't matter. Even if I didn't on my other turns, I could have charged him again. But now my general's out all by his lonesome. And the war shrine shrugs off my chariot. He does one wound to me. I do none to him. So I maintained the points, but I took a chance I didn't need to take. Warriors turn six. Now, we both think it's turn five. Even though we're both using a turn counter, we messed that up. Uh, ends up not mattering, but... Um, it might make it look like, uh, you know, why do we move a certain way? So he flies his sorcerer up to, so he can cast spells at my general. He kills my general. Beastman turns six. I just do some reforming. I'm going to go up one, two, yeah. There's that. So I just do some reforming. Uh, Warrior seven, he flies around where he can't get charged by anything. He tries some magic, nothing happens. And then my turn, I just shuffle things around nothing really changes so at the end of it it's a big win for the um, for the beastmen a lot of the extra points are based on table quarters and stuff and so I, I got a lot of that I want to say I had 22 points I know you can get up to 35 and so it wasn't that devastating of a victory but with with my first game being like 32 and this game being 22 my first game, I think I think my first game was 35, and this game was 22. So I'm I'm just a, I'm I'm real, still really high. So I was actually very very happy with my score because I don't want to play at the top table the whole tournament. Uh, I my list can't take it, and I think with this it's still a big win. I think I might be at the top table, uh, which is a place I don't want to be, but I can't complain. Sometimes you need to take points where you can get them. So that's it for game two. I'll see you in game three and just the next battle report. Hey everyone, once bitten here. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. As you know, YouTube has several functions you can use to interact with videos such as this. Uh, you can like the video, you can leave a comment, you can favorite the video. Uh, I want you to know that, that I appreciate it when you do things like that. It feels much more interactive than simply me talking to a screen. So if you're willing to do so, please like, comment, and favorite the videos. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want, and you certainly are welcome to share this video on your blog or other websites if you are so inclined. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.